Hello and welcome to the JMeta beginner tutorial series and this is the 16th session and we are going to learn about timers in JMeter. Timers is a very important concept in JMeter and it helps us to set up a realistic performance test. So what do I mean by realistic performance test and what does uh, timers actually mean in JMeter? So uh, think about this, whenever a real user will use your application, uh, he will not do all the actions very fast as a JMeter script does. So whenever we set up a performance test in JMeter, the tool tries to execute all the threats and all the requests as soon as it can. But this is not what happens in real world. A real user will take some time between two actions, he will have some think time added, he, there will be some random delay between various actions of a user. Okay, so the purpose of adding timers is to simulate real user actions and behavior and therefore we want to add some delay between the threads and uh, it will actually avoid over flooding the server and achieve real time behavior by uh, pacing the load in a real world situation. Okay, so th this is why we use timers and uh, timers are used to add think time to our JMeter performance test so that we can simulate a real world uh, application scenario. Okay, so uh, in JMeter there are a lot of uh, timers but what we are going to see here is let me add a thread group. Okay, and uh, let us add a simple controller. I am adding the simple controller just to group all my samples in a logical way. Okay, so now I will add a sampler and let me add a HTTP request and let us go to this site Life Charger. Let me go to this page and we will add a test for this particular page. So I will give the server name here only the domain is sufficient and I will give the path of this page okay let me add a listener to check my request is valid I am adding a table listener and I will just run it let me say okay I have saved my request and I have executed and yes I am getting a valid response okay so now we can add timers right click go to add go to timer and we have all these kind of timers right there are different types of timer what we will look at is constant timer and uniform random timer and most of your request 99% of your request uh, should be covered by using these two timers if you want a very complicated and you want to have various type of permutation combination mathematical calculation you can use other types of timer as well but here in this session I will cover constant timer and uniform random timer and 99% of your request should be covered by these two types of timer okay so uh, we are going to see constant timer and uniform random timer so let us uh, add a constant timer to our request I am adding a constant timer within my request and you can add the delay by adding the number of milliseconds here so as of now it is 300 I want to make it to a larger value so that I can show you the effect in action so I have set 5000 milliseconds which is equal to 5 seconds so let us run this request and you will see that for the first 5 seconds nothing will happen and only after 5 seconds the first request will get executed so I have started and you can see the timer here for 5 seconds it is waiting and only after 5 seconds we got our first request executed okay so to look into more detail let me add few more uh, requests
okay so what I'm doing here is I have added uh, these requests here okay and what I will do I will add one more uh, let me make this HTTP request name as one okay this is HTTP request 2 and this is HTTP request 3 okay and let me also add timers this is I'll just add it here I'll just tell you what I'm doing let me make it constant timer B and let me give this name as constant timer C okay so see I have a HTTP request one inside simple controller and the constant timer A is a child of HTTP request one so it will be applicable only to HTTP request one and not to uh, request two or request three okay now constant timer B is within simple controller okay is a child of simple controller so whatever requests are within simple controller it will be applied to those requests so constant timer B will be applied to HTTP request 1 as well as request 2 okay then we have a constant timer C which is a child of the thread group and which is outside simple controller so this constant timer C will be applicable to all the requests within the thread so it will be applicable to request 1 request 2 as well as request 3 okay so let me uh, make this as 3000 milliseconds all the delays so now you can uh, think about this right uh, HTTP request for HTTP request 1 constant timer A will be applicable constant timer B will also be applicable and constant timer C will be applicable so the total delay for request 1 will be 3 seconds plus 3 seconds plus 3 seconds which is 9 seconds for constant for HTTP request 2 uh, constant timer B is applicable and C is applicable so the delay is for 6 seconds for request 3 the only constant timer applicable is C which is 3 seconds so it will be delayed only by 3 seconds so let us see this in action now you can see uh, this has started and for the first 9 seconds they will be delay and only after 9 seconds we will get our request 1 getting executed so our request 1 got executed then after delay of 6 seconds we will get request 2 and yes and now after a delay of around 3 seconds we will get our third request so this is how you can uh, place constant timers and add delays between your samples okay now uh, let us also look at another timer which is uniform random timer okay and let me disable all the other timers and have only uniform random timer okay now you can see in uniform random time timer we have random delay max and constant delay offset so what does this mean we have random delay max and constant delay offset so this means that the delay will be a random value and will not be a fixed value to simulate real world scenario we do not want to have a fixed value of delay between all the threads but we want a random delay and the formula for this random delay will be uh, 0.x multiplied by random delay max plus constant delay offset okay so in this case we have random delay max as 100 and constant delay offset as 0 so the formula will turn out to be and uh, x is any digit between 0 and 9 so the formula turn out will be 0 into x x is 0 to 9 any digit multiplied by 
hundred plus zero. So the random delay will be between zero to ninety nine seconds, and it will vary between requests. Okay, and we can make it a higher value. I can say random delay of uh, let's say three thousand milliseconds and minimum constant delay offset of one thousand. Okay, so now if we run our test, you will see a random delay between the requests. So we have started, and let us see after around four seconds we got our first request. Then after a total of ten seconds we got second request, and then we got the third request. Okay, so we can see there is a random delay between these requests. So this is uh, how we use timers. and most of your request should be covered by using these two type of timers hope you like it thank you